general relativity is Einstein's theory of gravity. General relativity isn't very easy to learn because you need to learn new concepts, uh, new mathematics, and in addition there's some things you need to unlearn that you previously thought were obvious. For example, the concept of absolute time and Euclidean space. So these concepts, absolute time and Euclidean space, are assumed in virtually every branch of physics, classical mechanics, electricity and magnetism, quantum mechanics, statistical mechanics, but they don't actually hold. So for example, what do I mean by absolute time? Well, let's say that you and I come together and we synchronize our watches. Here's my watch, here's your watch. Um, then we go about our day. So. For example, you might decide to take a rocket ship around the moon and then back, whereas I just sit at home and read the newspaper. Well, we assume with absolute time that when we get back together at the end of the day that our clocks or our watches will still be synchronized. However, that's not the case. In general relativity, we have to abandon this notion of absolute time. Now, what do I mean by Euclidean space? Well. Normally we assume that space obeys Euclid's postulates, you know, parallel lines never cross. If we form a triangle, that the sum of the interior angles adds up to 180 degrees and so forth. And this assumption that space is Euclidean allows us to construct a Cartesian coordinate system and give absolute meaning to the XYZ coordinates of any object. However, this is not correct. Space is not Euclidean. A key lesson from special relativity is that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. C. Okay, this is really a remarkable claim. Okay, um, consider the following. Let's say here you are. Here's a flashlight. And this flashlight is shining. You measure the speed of this light wave and you measure speed C. Now let's say we have another observer running towards you with speed, say, half the speed of light. Well, the question is, what does this observer see for the speed of this light wave? According to Newtonian mechanics, this observer should see the light coming towards him or her with speed three halves the speed of light. But this isn't correct. Nothing can travel faster than C. So this observer also sees the light coming towards him or her with speed C. So one immediate consequence of this speed of light limit is that Newtonian gravity must be wrong. Okay, so consider we have two bodies, uh, body number one and body number two. The gravitational force between these two bodies, say the force that object one exerts on object two, force on object 2 by 1 is equal to Newton's constant times the product of the masses divided by the distance squared between the two objects. Okay, according to this Newtonian formula, it must be wrong because if body number 1 suddenly moved, according to this formula, body 2 would know about that movement instantaneously. This body would sense the change in the gravitational force. Okay, so we know that this cannot be correct because it violates the speed of light limit. General relativity um, corrects this uh, defect in Newtonian gravity 
and in the process develops a new point of view corrects this problem and new point of view is that gravity is actually a manifestation of geometry. Uh, in particular, the geometry of space-time. All right, what does geometry have to do with gravity? Well, let me try to give you a, a little bit of an insight into the relationship between geometry and gravity. Um, geometry, the geometry of space-time, determines uh, inertial frames. Okay, so consider, um, first of all, Newtonian point of view. Um, here we are standing on the surface of the Earth. And how do we describe this in Newtonian gravity? Well, we say that there's a gravitational force, mg, pulling us down towards the center of the Earth. And there's a normal force, which is the force of the floor pushing up on our feet. And these two forces are balanced. And so uh, the balancing of these two forces means that we're not accelerating. So you'll notice the assumption here is that we are in an in inertial frame. We are in, uh, at, at rest at the surface of the Earth, we're in, we are in an unaccelerated frame. Okay, but general relativity teaches us the following view. Here we are standing on the surface of the Earth. General relativity tells us because we're in a curved space-time, this is actually not, we are not in an inertial frame. In fact, what is an inertial frame near the surface of the Earth? Well, if I drop my pen, there's my pen, and I let it drop, dot, 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 it falls towards the surface of the Earth. While it's freely falling, that's, that pen is in an inertial frame. But us, as we stand here on the surface of the Earth, we are not in an inertial frame. So what's happening is we have a normal force, that's the physical force of the floor pushing on our feet, and that unbalanced force is accelerating us radially outward. Okay, again, we're not in an inertial frame, we are accelerating due to this unbalanced force. So what we interpret as gravity, a gravitational force in Newtonian physics is really just a manifestation of the curved space-time geometry uh, dictating the inertial frames and telling us that we are actually not in an inertial frame as we're standing at rest with respect to the surface of the Earth. So let me give you an analogy here. Um, consider a car, and this is now, this is a top view of the car, and the car is turning to the left, moving in a circle. And here we are, we're sitting on the inside of the car, let's say we're sitting on the right side of the car. And what do we feel? Well, there's a normal force. So this is a force that the seat, or the, let's say the side of the inside, side of the car pushing on our shoulder, pushing us to the left. And it has to be the case because our bodies, in order for us to move in this circle, we have to accelerate. So that requires this unbalanced force. And this, this is, in this context of motion in a circle, this is sometimes referred to as the centripetal force. Okay, now one way of describing this is to say that we are at rest with respect to the car because there's a centrifugal force pushing us outward and it's balanced by the centripetal force. Okay? 
Now this way of describing the situation, this was actually pretty common a generation or two ago. Um, um, but teachers and textbook writers uh, at some point realized that this concept of centrifugal force was very confusing to students. Students thought that the centrifugal force was a real physical force, when in fact it's a fictitious force that's been introduced into the problem just because we're trying to do physics in a non-inertial frame. Right? We're trying to describe what's happening as this car moves around in a circle. It's accelerating. Um, so if we wanted to pretend that was an inertial frame, we would have to introduce this fictitious force to balance the centripetal force. Okay, and keep the person at rest in the car. But we now know that this isn't really the best way to describe it. There is no centrifugal force. There is only a centripetal force, and that's accelerating us around in this circle. Okay. Similarly, in gravity, what we now realize is that the, what we call the gravitational force in Newtonian physics and Newtonian gravity is really a fictitious force. Okay, it really, we've introduced it artificially because we're trying to do physics in a non-inertial frame. Here's the true picture of what's happening. We're accelerating radially outward away from the center of the earth due to this unbalanced normal force in. All right, so now this point of view that we have in general relativity that we're um, we are accelerating outward that may seem very strange. After all, I'm sure if you think about it a minute you'll come up with the following argument. We can't be accelerating radially outward because after all, here's the center of the Earth. I know that this distance between me and the center of the Earth, that's the radius of the Earth, that distance is not changing. So how can I be accelerating radially away from the center of the Earth when that distance isn't changing? Well, the answer to that is that, uh, you know, your argument would be correct if space were Euclidean, but it isn't. And we'll see more clearly as we go through the course and develop some of the mathematics how it can be that we can be accelerating radially outward from the center of the Earth without the distance between us and the center of the Earth changing. Let me give you a thought experiment, which was actually uh, one made by Einstein, and it was very influential in his thinking about general relativity. So here's a rocket ship out in outer space and the rocket engines are firing um, and here you are inside the rocket ship and the rocket ship is accelerating upward in this picture at 9.8 meters per second squared and what accelerates you is the normal force of the floor of the rocket ship pushing up on your feet so Einstein thought about the connection between this problem of accelerating in a rocket ship and this problem of standing on the surface of the earth. And he realized that you can't tell the difference. What you physically feel with your senses is just the force of the floor of the rocket ship or the floor of the room you're in pushing upward on your feet. And you can't tell the difference with any measuring devices either. The difference between this situation of accelerating in a rocket ship at 9.8 meters per second squared and standing on the surface of the Earth. So what Einstein realized is that if there's really no way to tell the difference between these two situations, then there is no difference. So gravity is really acceleration. So we'll see all this more clearly as we develop the mathematics. So to summarize, what we have in Newtonian gravity referred to as gravitational force is really acceleration. And what determines acceleration is the inertial frames
which are in turn defined uh, by the space-time geometry. And furthermore, that space-time geometry is curved. 